Okay, so let's start creating some adaptive component families. Let's go into um, uh, create this, create this uh, float and ceiling joist. I'm going to new for Revit new family, and we're looking for a metric um, generic model adaptive. So that's the template file that you want to use, generic model adaptive. Okay, so I'm going to create the geometry to um, to make this shape. Uh, I think I'll, I'll just use a normal line. Uh, I'm just going to draw this line anywhere, in any direction. Um, I'll just draw it around about the right length. Um, it doesn't really matter what length this is, but I just want to get it roughly in scale uh, to the length of our ceiling joist to suit our building. Now, I'm going to put um, a series of points along that line. Uh, these are the points that are going to drive our shape. A little bit later. So just drop some points in along that line just so we're getting it somewhat along the length that we need. And I need a to total of five nodes. Um, so one, two, three, four, five. So I need those five nodes. I've just deleted the line itself and I've just got left with these nodes all in a straight line. So if I select all of those points, and as long as I've got nothing but points selected, it is contextual, so I've got Make Adaptive up here. So I can click on Make Adaptive if there are only points that I've selected. And while they're selected there, I can now draw a spline through those points. Um, the spline is in a straight line at the moment, of course, but um, if I move those points, it would take on a spline shape. Uh, points have also been numbered. From one to five. Okay. Now, the, uh, the points you've got are reference planes. So I'm going to use the set command, series of reference planes. And I'm going to set that vertical reference plane up so that I can draw a line from that point. Um, and I can draw it straight up. Um, Certainly, just any distance doesn't really matter. Uh, I just now want to draw straight out from there. Okay. I might make this a reference line, this top one. Not too sure if it has to be, but. Um, oops, I lost that. Well, I'll just use the normal model line, I think. I'll come out uh, until it roughly lines up with that point number five, or there's an intercept lining up vertically for me, so I've got that one there, I've got that line. Um, I'll just select this end one, I've just got a tab through to select it on its own and delete it. Uh, and I'm just going to place a point at the start of that line and another point at the end of that line. Okay. So if I delete that line, and if I select the two points, I can make them adapted. Oh, okay, I didn't have that one selected. Try that again. Select both points. Yeah, they're selected this time, so I can make them adaptive. So I've got another two adaptive points. And you've got to take note of the numbering order. So we have one to five at the bottom, back to the starting end for six, and then seven at the other end. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna close up those lines. I could have left those lines there, but um, I'm gonna close up those lines and form that shape there because I'm gonna want to um, create a form out of a closed shape. So okay, okay, I'll just control. Let's have a look. I just want to check that this um, node point down here is where it's See, this one is working as a spline, so I can move those points, and as you see, um, it splines that bottom one, so we'll just go back to that. That's fine, that's the effect that I wanted. Um, but I just want to select the closed loop going around there. Uh, I'll just control select. Control select that one. 
Hold on, yeah. Hmm. Just a bit concerned as to uh, why it's not selecting one enclosed loop right from the start, but um, I'll, I'll delete them and I'll put a reference line in and, sh and see if that makes any difference. I have to go back to 3D, I have to go to 3D snapping now. And if I do select, make these reference lines, might not have mattered that it wasn't selected, but now it is. You can see it's um, I'm selecting because of these reference lines. It is forming a closed shape, which gives me a lot more confidence when I go to create a form. Um, I can create one. So I can create a form as a flat plane or one with thickness. So I'm going to create one with thickness there. And I'm going to give this um, thickness of, uh, let's say, about 100. I've got a 100 millimeter thick. And remember, this, is, this could be like a, a plywood box beam made up with um, top and bottom flanges and then webs on the outside of uh, plywood to create the box shape. Okay. So, we've got to note the numbering sequence again. It is 1 to 5 at the bottom and we go back to 6 and then to 7. We've got to keep reminding ourselves of that because that's important when we go back into the project. I'll um, note that the, the, the name of this family at the moment is called Family 11. Um, I could load that into the project, but uh, what I think I might do is I'm going to set the reference level back, uh, the, the plane, the work plane, not to the reference level again. I'm going to grab a dimension tool and put a dimension on each of these webs. So from that web surface to the front web surface, and place that just to, to dimension the thickness. Yeah, and if I select that dimension and give it a label, add a parameter, and you know, call this width, little width, I'll leave it as a type parameter and click OK. Um, while I'm here, I might as well set up some types too. So I'll go up to family types, I'll create a new type called 100. Click OK, the value of the width is set to 100, so I'll go a new one here now, 65, change the value of the width to 65, whoops, to me. Um, create another new one, um, I'll make this one 120, and change the value of the width to 120. OK, and we can... Um, Set it back to 100 and just, actually we might just flex this, try 65 and click apply. And you can see back in the drawing editor, the model did change to 65, change it to 120, click apply. So we're just flexing this to make sure that, that width does work. Back, leave it at 100 and we go OK to that. So we've got this plywood box beam. Now, the file name's called Family 11. So when we load it back into the project, um, and yes, that's the right project. It'll come in now as a family called Family 11. Okay. So, change to a 3D view, and I can start placing this. I'm going to place it at the bottom point. So that was the point number one back in the family. Go to the next point. Give my graphics card enough time to catch up with my pointing when we're using these adaptive points with 3D pointing on. 3D snapping. The next one is there. And the last one at the bottom. Okay, and we're going to go to the top, just one at the end. That and one at the other end. And we've placed our first curved bottom shaped ceiling joist. Okay. So we need to replicate some more of these. 
We needed a total of seven of those along there. So I'll just stop the video here and do those.